Hi, Brian here. Welcome to Treebud Academy. If you're new, I make videos on business, advertising, and marketing. But first, let's get back to the office. It's really cold out here. finally got back to the office. Today, I want to share with you three tips that I use to craft a effective keyword strategy. And at the end of the video, I want to share with you a secret weapon that the pros almost always keep to themselves. Here we go. Tip number one, think like your audience. The first step is actually to put yourself into the shoes of your audience and think about what they search for when they're looking for your product. So things like a cell phone, for example. So you see here, uh, my cell phone's actually got a little crack in it. So what are some of the trigger points for a customer to start on their journey for your product? In this case, I would probably start searching for Samsung Galaxy S9 screen replacements. I'm gonna start looking around for different prices and see what are the affordable options. Then I may search for terms like Samsung Galaxy S9 screen replacement pricing, screen replacement shops, or repair kits. Then after doing some research, it may be better on the long run or better value to actually just get the most updated phone. So things I could look for at this point could be uh, different flagship models from Google, from Apple, or from Samsung. I may even perhaps look for Huawei, OnePlus, or LG phones. These are all brands that I've heard of before, and that's why it's important to have brand awareness campaigns and filling out the full funnel. Now, in another video, I talked about using video ads, display ads, and search ads to fill out the top of the funnel for brand awareness, but today I'm going to focus on just the keyword aspects, so the search campaigns. So at the awareness phase, your keywords may be a bit more generic and they may be modified by things like best, top, or most common. So in this case of a cell phone, it could be best cell phone, 2021, top five budget smartphones. These terms are more for people who are at the very top of the funnel or just entering into the consideration phase. And speaking of which, in the consideration phase, the user is more familiar with the potential solutions to their problem, or they've identified a problem in their life, and they want to find a list of solutions for them. And it, this is where you may use keywords such as your competitors' brand names, or things like comparison, reviews, pricing. All of these are things that people would search for when they're in the consideration phase. At the decision phase, this is also known as the bottom of the funnel. And this is because the purchase decision usually happens at this phase. And a common way to win is to just include your brand name along with keywords with modified terms such as buying, where to purchase, uh, sale, or warranty. Some other good modifiers include coupon or promo. So to generalize, to think like your audience is to put yourself into their shoes and to think about how they would search or what they would type in Google to find your product or find solutions that solve their needs. Tip number two, prospecting keywords. So let's say you're struggling. You can't come up with a robust list of keywords and you only have a handful to work with. That's totally fine. What I like to do in this scenario is that using the base set of keywords that I've come up with already, I would then use 
and modify them to cast a wider net to prospect for new keywords, search terms to add to the campaign later down the road. Now, setting up your prospecting keyword campaign is super easy. You might want to start limiting your budget so you don't blow out your budget in such wide targeting keywords. And, or you might want to restrict your campaign by geofencing or using other means to limit your reach. And all of this is so that you're still trying to get new keywords coming in without spending too much money or too much of your budget on these keywords. Setting up a separate campaign can help you finely tune and manage the budget and the amount of money you spend on these keywords. Now, once this is all set up, all you have to do is change the match type of your keywords to phrase match or broad match. And once in a while, go into the search query report to find new terms that people are searching for. Now, when you look through the search query reports, it's totally fine if a lot of the ones you see are not related to your product at all. Uh, this is actually the main purpose. You're purposefully trying to cast a wide net to mine for some nuggets that you can add to your campaign. But once in a while, you'll probably come across a keyword that will make you go, huh, I've never thought about that. I can definitely add this to my campaign. Now, very closely related to the prospecting keywords is tip number three, negative keywords. This is an often overlooked aspect of setting up a campaign. It's very important to have a negative keyword list set up and quite often you'll be able to find free resources on the internet for default lists. Um, just do a simple Google search for negative keyword lists and you'll be able to find tons that you can add to your campaigns. This will automatically, right out of the gate, help you limit your exposure to unwanted search queries and save on your budget. A word of caution, Negative keyword mining is very time consuming and very labor intensive, and there can be not a lot of payoff to the amount of effort that you put in. What I like to do, especially for campaigns that are just starting out, is to actually focus more on keyword ad relevance and landing page relevance, making sure the journey from the search query to the keywords that are matched with it, to the ad, to the landing page is a smooth experience and that's the user finds the answers that they're looking for, and this would yield higher conversions. I think Google is moving away from keywords and search terms and moving more into the contextual or behavioral-based targeting, and you see this with their changes. Now, we may talk more about this later on. Here is the secret that not many people talk about and I'm willing to share with you. There's a very powerful tool called Ngram Analysis. It's mostly used in linguistics. And if you want to learn more about it, I'll link the Wikipedia article below. Essentially what it is, is it uses statistics to analyze the relationship of different words or combinations of words to a particular outcome. And in our case, it could be conversions or clicks. Using this, you can actually predict and mine for different keywords and combinations of phrases that you can add to your campaign to increase your conversion rate and click-through rate. The script automatically pulls your search query report, does the analysis, and gives you an output on the report where you can then interpret and figure out what keywords to add to your campaign. This script is created by Brain Labs, and I'll link it in the description box below. And that's the three tips and secrets I wanted to share with you today. Thank you so much for watching to the very end. I have a video in the pipeline that covers some of the keyword research tools that I've used in the past, and I can explain to you going into detail how to use each one and how they impact your keyword strategy and your keyword list. So be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're alerted when that video comes out. All right, if this video reaches 100 likes, I'll do a tutorial video going in depth on how I use the script and how I interpret the data in the script so you can follow along and apply it to your campaigns.